here's the thing. The focus <laughs> of my channel is to find, you know, your own taste in interior design without having to spend a ton of money. But the twist of that is I also don't like cheap things. I don't like to buy from mass-produced home stores. I don't like my home to feel cheap. I would rather have something really ugly, <laughs> like a really ugly countertop, than have a really cheaply made, like, faux quartz painted countertop. Like, if I know something is really cheaply made, I, I really, it bothers me that it's in my house. And here's the thing, there's always alternatives for the cheap items you have in your home. It might just take a little bit more effort, or you might have to get it cleaned if it's used, or whatever it is. There's other options to the cheap shit in your house. So, you know, I've seen other YouTubers do this type of video, but I wanted to give my advice and my opinions on how to make your home not, <laughs> not look cheap. Not that I'm all about making your home look really expensive. I think you just want it to feel nice and good with good quality pieces. And if you can do that, and if you can curate that, if you can curate well-made pieces within your home, then you're just going to like them more. It's going to last longer. You're not going to get sick of it. And again, these are all my opinions because this is my YouTube channel and it's what I do, I guess. I express <laughs> my design opinions on video. Hi, I'm Paige Wassel. Welcome to my channel. So yeah, let's get started on today's video of how to not make your home look cheap or whatever it is that I named this video because that's how I roll. I named them after. I named them pretty much right before posting. I want to talk a little bit more about my first point that I made at the beginning of this video during the intro, you know, the intro, where I say, you know, if you have a countertop that's really outdated and ugly, I'd rather have an outdated countertop than a DIY countertop where people like paint the quartz or like even contact paper or whatever it is. I think DIYs can make your house look cheap. Obviously, there are some DIYs that are really great. And, you know, like I made this desk out of some wood that I had cut. But there are some DIYs that just look DIY. And I think some people go overboard with it. So you just have to be really specific on the types of DIYs you want to participate in. Because if you're masking too much with a DIY project, if you're covering up too much, it's just going to look bad. And I would say just stick to the outdated whatever it is. I actually talked about this in my last video of this little kitchen area that uh, someone was renting in their apartment. And I said, this is actually a really good area to do peel and stick, you know, tile backdrops or peel and stick, whatever it may be, because it's a small enough space and I think when you have like a giant kitchen or a really large kitchen and you do peel and stick, it just looks, it's just too much. So basically, I guess I'm suggesting if you're going to do a DIY, either make sure it doesn't look too crafty and two, make sure it's in a really small space. I don't think you should DIY a giant room. Don't DIY if it's going to look DIY. It will make your home look cheap. That is the bottom line. And that's the end of the video, actually. So thank, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, on to my next point. <laughs> If you have a cheap rug, if you have a rug that looks like this, it's automatically going to make your room look cheap. Some people live in really nice apartments and then have a rug like this, and it just really cheapens, cheapens up the space. Also, if your rug is too small, that also can make your place look cheap. I personally like to buy really large pieces of furniture, large rugs. I feel like the larger the piece, the more it looks like it's built into the place and the more adult you feel. You know, I guess it's all about feeling like an adult, kind of, I guess, in interiors, in a way. So, of course, my best suggestion for this is to buy a vintage rug because, one, you want it to be big, and, two, you want it to be well-made. So, that's going to be pricey. I did make a rug video. You could go watch my rug video on how to find big, affordable rugs on Etsy, mainly. But you could look on Facebook Marketplace, you could look on Craigslist, whatever it is. If anything, just don't get a rug like this. Make sure to look at the binding of the rug. You can tell by the binding of it how cheap it's going to be. 
Also, look what it's made of. If it's synthetic or polyester or like weird materials or plasticky, you don't want it. Because again, I would rather have no rug, to be honest, and save up or wait and keep digging on Facebook Marketplace until you find something than have a cheap rug. And rugs are actually really easy to clean. You could clean them yourself or you can even bring them into some dry cleaning places. I've done it depending on the size. And sometimes it's risky to buy, you know, stuff made of actual fabric off of a used website, you know, like buying a used sofa can sometimes be a little risky, but a rug, you can straight up clean that to the bone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, don't have a, a cheap rug. Moving on. If you watched my most recent home update, I made my own curtains and curtains. People always comment that I don't say the T. Curtains? Curtains. I feel like I'm saying the T. But anyways, I made my own pinch pleat curtains. and <laughs> Curtains. And I talk about how professional they look when they have, you know, the pinch pleat on the top or just a design or style of a curtain that looks really nice. I feel like a lot of people will get curtains like this or curtains with grommets. And that's when your place can kind of look like college. And what's interesting is that design has come so far that you don't have to get this type of curtain anymore. There are so many options that are just as affordable on the market. And same with the curtain rods. Or even getting track curtains is an affordable thing now. You can get track curtains from Ikea, which I feel like was not a thing years ago. I was always buying them, you know, from this site that I'll, I'll link down below. But curtains, you know, rugs, like the bigger statement pieces in your room have to be a specific type. You really can't half-ass something that takes up a full wall or your full floor or even like a sofa. You know, the bigger the piece, the nicer it needs to be. And there are ways to find non-cheap versions of that, especially now. You don't have to go to Bed Bath & Beyond and get, you know, these specific kinds. You have so many sources. Isn't Bed Bath & Beyond even, like, isn't that going out of business? Or like, isn't Best Buy, you know, places like that? Because there's so many other options online, wherever. So grab yourself a curtain rod off of, you know, wherever, Amazon, and get some pinch pleat curtains and just don't half-ass your curtains. Get some like nice, long, luxurious curtains or, you know, make them. I made mine. This was super easy. I talk about the whole process in my most recent home update if you want to watch it of how to make pinch pleat curtains. It's actually so easy. It looks hard, but it's easy. Bad art, bad frames. Don't have them. Have nothing. I would rather have nothing on my wall than a very cheap frame or very cheap art. I feel like some people are like, wait, we need to have something up here. So they slap this up on their wall and that's cheap. That makes your house look cheap. That makes it feel like a college dorm to me. You know, a really plasticky frame. You can thrift frames. You can get a good frame. And art really isn't that difficult. I know investing in art is expensive, but you can find cool art all over the place. You could paint something yourself. You could have your friend paint you something. I always say have, you know, your kids or your niece or nephew paint you something. I always suggest, you know, giving them like a color palette and be like, paint this and then frame it and put it on your wall. There's so many alternatives to art than, you know, the art from Target. Thrift and oil painting. That's pretty much it. Bad art, bad frames, nix them immediately. Have nothing. I would literally rather have nothing. I also think the way you hang your art is very important. Why can't I pronounce my T's? Important. Um... Sometimes people hang the art too high. And if you're short, <laughs> you'll hang the art too low. I remember in my apartment in Venice, I had two roommates. I was the tallest roommate. I was 5'8". My other two roommates were a little bit shorter than me. And someone came over and was like, all of your art is hung really low. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. I feel like I was just hanging it like at my eye or their, their eye. And if you create a gallery wall, you want everything to be nice and tight and close together, creating kind of like one big art piece. Instead, a lot of people spread them out, and then for some reason, that can just make it look cheaper. It's kind of weird. I don't know why, but it does. You also don't need to hang all of your art. I think leaning your art 
can look really good. I lean a few pieces of art on my, you know, my armoire thing in my bedroom. And I think it just has like a certain feel to it when the art is leaned. I actually saw, I think on like Instagram reels or something that Dakota Johnson in her house, she uh, leans a lot of her art, which is interesting. It's a style. It's a thing. It doesn't mean you're being, you know, too lazy to hang it. I think leaned art looks good. I am always curious, like if I have an earthquake, what's going to happen if I have an earthquake, if there is an earthquake, like what's every, everything in my house is going to break. I need to get on that. I mean, even hung art will fall. Oh, whatever. Let's take a quick little break. <laughs> to talk about today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Rocket Money is your own personal finance app that I personally have been using for quite some time now. Rocket Money has a lot of aspects that really help you get organized financially, and that was a huge goal of mine this year. One of the main features I love is that it helps you unsubscribe from subscriptions that you had no idea you had, which is a little embarrassing for me. If you're trying to save money, which again, we all are trying to save money, you know, but sometimes you need a little help and Rocket Money has a feature where it takes a percentage from your checking and puts it into your savings. And I like that personally. I like that someone's taking care of the back end. <laughs> it also helps you stay organized in the way that you budget. It can break down how much you've spent, you know, going to restaurants or shopping. And honestly, when you see those numbers, you're like, oh, so it's nice to have a place where it's kind of all getting taken care of for you which is what I need. Go to rocketmoney.com slash pagewassel, me, to get started for free. And thanks again, Rocket Money, for sponsoring this video. I truly do love to be financially organized. I just don't want to do it myself. So, Rocket Money. <laughs> okay, back to the video. Not only do I hate fake plants. People have fake plants, it's fine. I don't do it, I would never do it. I just don't like a fake plant. Even if it looks so real, I don't like it in my head, I just know. It's the same thing with faux wood flooring. I just know in my head, No, maybe no one else knows, but I know that it's fake and that bothers me. I don't like it, I don't know why. But on top of fake plants making your house look cheap, I think a lot of people who have real plants put them in really bad planters or pots or whatever that are just cheap looking from Home Depot or wherever they get them. And I know pots can get expensive, especially really big ones because, you know, you buy them from a ceramist or whatever it is, they can get expensive. But if you're on a budget, just get terracotta. You can't go wrong with a terracotta planter. They're affordable. They're at every, you know, Home Depot. They're at Lowe's. They're at wherever. Get a nice planter for your plants you don't need the plasticky ones. You know, it's easy. If you know me, you know I love pillows. <laughs> we actually launched uh, our pillows last week for my company Was. Thank you all so much. I can't believe it's still so shocking to me that these things sell out and you guys like my, you guys, I said it, you guys <laughs> like my designs. It's so nice. But uh, I wanted to touch on pillows really quick because if you look at my website and in my descriptions, I'll, you know, I'll write the cover size and then the insert size. And the insert size is always bigger than the cover. So brings me to my point that you should always buy an insert that's a little bit bigger than the pillow cover because it makes it look, you know, a little bit more stuffed. It's a little bit more put together. No one likes like a floppy little, you know, pillow. That doesn't mean you necessarily have to get, you know, feathered down. You can still get a poly insert. I don't mind the difference. It depends on the pillow, really. But you should just overstuff it a little bit. You know? Just overstuff it a little bit. I also do this with bedding. I will get a king duvet instead of a queen. I, I've always had a queen bed, but I always have a king duvet on it because it just, like, feels better and bigger. I guess I just like everything bigger. I guess I should move to Texas. No. <laughs> if you are following every single trend to the T, or you're a trend follower, your place is going to look cheap. It's just the bottom line of it. If you're participating in furniture trends, decor trends, whatever it is, it's just not going to come together in a way that makes the home feel nice. You should always take bits and pieces from different eras of design, different styles of design. That is my whole approach. That's my entire design approach is always having different things from different 
eras and styles or whatever it is. Sometimes if a room starts to feel too mid-century, I'll be like, okay, we need to like add in something French or whatever it may be. That's what you got to do. And that doesn't mean not having a little trend. You, of course, need to have a little trend. What do you mean? I, I, the, you know, this is trendy. This is trendy, but it's also classic. You have to have, you know, like a little percentage of trend in there. I would describe myself as somewhat basic, you know, but I like that about myself. I like that I have a little percentage. I've been telling this one guy that I was seeing, I was like, I'm 18% basic because, you know, I watch The Bachelor and I listen to Taylor Swift. There's some other things, but if I was no percentage of basic, then I don't know, then I'm just like annoyingly cool. You know, you got to have a mix of everything, you know? Some of the trendy things, some of the basic things, some of the classics, some of the, you know, stuff that will never go out of style, some of the stuff that will go out of style. You just got to have bits and pieces. You don't want to go all one direction. So, yes, I am 18% basic. If I broke down my percentages, I would be 18% basic, 20% girl boss. (laughs) I'm kidding. Actually, this one guy I was seeing uh, at a point kept calling me girl boss. And I was like, that is, I can't, please stop that too much. All right. We're getting off topic. (laughs) Let me finish my, let me finish my final points. Not having enclosed shelving. You just have to have enclosed shelving. Clutter can make your place look cheap, but you can be clutterful. (laughs) Clutterful. (laughs) You can have clutter, but just like put it in a cabinet, you know, like I have this cabinet back here. Actually, Every time I open this cabinet, I'm like, I need to clean out this cabinet. Can you even see? Well, it doesn't look that bad. But it's hidden clutter because sometimes you just need to hide your clutter. And if you don't, you know, it can make your house look a little cheap. That's all. So get some enclosed shelving, especially in a bathroom. Oh, my alarm. I have a call. I have a call with my dad. <laughs> my dad made a call with me, like a calendar call, to discuss some kitchen renovations um, in five minutes. So let's let's wrap this up. The last point I wanted to talk about that can really make your place look cheap is bad fabric on anything. On your curtains, on your sofas, blankets, pillows, anything that's fabric. If you have a cheap Velvet, which you all know I I just like this. It's not even real velvet. Real velvet is fine. And like mohair is really cool. But if you have like a cheap polyester velvet, no. Good well-made fabric can make all of the difference. You can literally get linen curtains from Ikea. Like there's other alternatives to the bad stuff nowadays, especially now. I would say, you know, we've come a long way in interiors that good design is a lot more approachable. I think people just like don't really know how to go about it or they don't know the resources. You just got to dig, you know, you just got to dig. That's all I got to say. That's all we have for today. (laughs) Uh, I have my call with my dad (laughs) and his bestie who's helping us uh, redo the kitchen. We're not doing a full gut renovation to this kitchen. We want to keep all the cabinets. Like there's a lot of stuff that we're trying to keep. So I'm trying to make it, you know, like fun upgrades. I am adding in some open shelving, which people have said that's like not in anymore, but I just don't think that's like a thing. How can open shelving be out? You just have to have like a little of it, you know? And then, and then he, uh, hold on, wait, this is funny. He has like a giant list of things I need to source for the lake house. And I've been so busy with these pillows. He's like going to kill me. I was like, please just wait until I'm the pillows are launched. But these are the hardware that are on the cabinets right now. And it, while I don't despise it, I think new hardware is going to help the cabinets because they're pretty outdated. They're like an Amish wood type cabinet. So he just mailed this to me. Um, he could have totally sent me a photo, but appreciate it. You know, he was like, here's the hardware. Um, no, I guess this is kind of cheap. Like it's kind of plasticky. Anyways, I might film some of that. I don't know. Got to get on my call with my dad and his friend and it's FaceTime. And I love that he sent like a calendar invite. (laughs) Um, but to wrap up your home being cheap, I guess. I feel like these are pretty easy steps or like little tidbits of like how to go about sourcing 
when decorating your home so it doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't, I don't feel like you have to spend a lot of money for your house to feel nice. It's true. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You just got to curate it correctly and, you know, go slow and don't just like result to the cheap stuff, to the particle board, you know, credenza and the, the terrible rug and just take down your really bad art. Honestly, if you have bad art, that will save you a lot. Okay, that's it for today's video sit down hangout session. I'm going to go for a walk because it's 80 degrees. And I was thinking to myself today, I was like, I, I just like summer. I don't, I like summer. I don't care about it being winter really ever. I just like the sun. I mean, I could have cold days, but no, I, I honestly could live in summer personally. I don't like go to the beach all that often. I just, the sun makes such a big difference for me. And that's why I have to live in California, even though it's been rainy as fuck. Truly, since I've lived here, I, it's taking forever to get into good weather. It's really annoying. I also need to go be social at like a coffee shop or something because I need <laughs> a wedding date for a wedding I have on 420. I have 10 days. Shit, I have 10 days, 11 days, 10 days to find a wedding date to a wedding on 420 right here in LA. I could bring anybody. I could bring a fun, I just want like a fun date. I have a plus one because my friend is cool. Um, but then it's like, wait, who, who, who's going to be my plus one? Find me a plus one. I have 10 days. I need to get on Hinge. I need to I need to start swiping. And I need to, like, I, I don't know. 10 days is... I, I, how to find a guy. How to lose a guy in 10 days. No, how to find a guy in 10 days. There's obviously guys I could bring, but I'm also, like, at this point where I'm like, maybe I just tell the bride that I'm not bringing a date, but that's 10 days before. Is that really going to, like, fuck things up? Let me, let me know your opinion on that. Like, how late is too late to back out? Because then it's, like, messing up her seating chart. I don't know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> That's it. Goodbye. <laughs>